Welcome to this discussion of the PAP Plus clinical trial outcomes. I'm going to give a clinical commentary on a series of cases that were treated in Ultimo, Sydney by Dr. Fadi Yasmin. No gingival barrier was used. The gel was in contact with the teeth and the soft tissues. Each patient had three 15-minute applications of the in-office formula of PAP Plus. This includes an activator which raises the pH into the alkaline range, and the gel was activated using a 405 nanometer wavelength light source with shades recorded using the 3D master system before and after. We're going to look at what happens to the soft tissues and to the hard tissues, but as a leading in comment, none of the patients that I'm about to share with you that were treated by Dr. Yasmin experienced any sensitivity or zingers during the treatment or following the bleaching treatment. The first case begins as a 2M2 and it becomes a 1M1. And we can see this dramatic reduction in yellow shade with preservation of the reflections of the teeth and no changes whatsoever in the soft tissues. Second patient is a 1.5M2 and once again we can see the reduction in the yellow shade of the teeth, preserved reflections, and no soft tissue changes. Patients like this in the mid-range yellow shade region are the patients who are most amenable to bleaching treatments. They're excellent candidates because they're often concerned about the intensity of yellow shade in their teeth. This patient is a 2.5 M2, so here is the before image, and then here is the after image. And once again, we can notice those three changes, the reduced yellow, the preserved reflections with the teeth looking quite vital and alive and no changes in the soft tissues. This case is a 1.5 M2 before and immediately after. And once again, the same three changes showing you how predictable it is. Let's move up to a 1 M2. Here is the before image and here is the after image. We can notice again that there is a reduction in yellow with preserved reflections and no soft tissue changes. Here is a 1M1.5 before and after going to a 0.5M1 and a 1M1 becoming a 0.5M1. Notice again how the three characteristic features are completely preserved. Here is a 1M1.5 treating the lower teeth, going to a 0M1. Notice in this case that the treatment has approached the saturation point where maximum bleaching occurs, and if there were further treatments, then there is a risk of over bleaching. Notice how there is the beginning of development of a generalized opacity in the teeth. This is always a concern when treating patients whose baseline shade is lighter. When you reach this point, you should not do further cycles of treatment in the same appointment. Here we have a patient who at baseline has obvious mild fluorosis with snow capping around the incisal one quarter of the teeth. Predictably, when these patients undergo bleaching, this opacity is likely to become more evident. And when we look at the after image, we can see that the fluorosis has been uncovered. The approach in such cases is to reverse the fluorosis. We don't need to do any treatment of the enamel because the inopus bleaching treatment has made the enamel more porous and indeed has raised the pH around the enamel which improves the remineralizing action when we apply GC Tooth Mousse Plus. The patient can rub this on at the time of the appointment and then continue through using the rest of the tube and you'll find that cases of mild fluorosis, the fluorosis will disappear completely. If there is any residual fluorosis left when the patient has completely exhausted the tube, applying only about a pea size amount every day, then you can do some microabrasion of the enamel to remove the remaining areas. 
If we zoom in, we can see the increase in the area of the opacity as the fluorosis that's in the tooth becomes uncovered by the bleaching treatment. Here is a case where the patient is a 3M2 at baseline and goes to a 1M1. The mild fluorosis, which was evident at baseline, has been uncovered. And so the patient's final appearance is a combination of having teeth of a lighter shade, but also we can see some of that diffuse opacity from fluorosis. So this case needs some follow-up management in the way I've just described. Here is a case here, which is a 1M1.5 at baseline and transitions across to a 0.5 M1. What's important in this case is the patient previously had had fixed orthodontic appliances. We can notice that in the after image that the white spot lesions, which were decalcification events which occurred around the brackets, are now much more obvious. The management of these is exactly the same as for fluorosis. We apply the GC tooth mist plus immediately and get the patient to continue doing this and this will reverse the white spot lesions. If we just zoom in and compare the before and after images, we can see clearly the outline of the brackets indicated on the upper image and we can see more of these on the post-treatment image. Of course, in situations like this, there may also be residues of orthodontic bonding resin left behind. This is why taking the orthodontic treatment history of a patient and removing any residues from bracket adhesive is such an important part of working a patient up for an in-office bleaching treatment. In this case here, the patient is a 2M2, and we can notice there is some fairly obvious fluorosis present in these teeth. And then following treatment, we can notice that the fluorosis has been uncovered. Of course, the tooth shade has lightened, in this case, to a 1M1.5, and the patient needs the follow-up treatment with the CPP-ACP topical cream to reverse that opacity and give the patient a pleasant final appearance. In this case here, the patient obviously has fixed restorations on the upper arch, and we're going to focus on what happens to the lower arch. Notice that the patient has quite a few white spot lesions from a past period in their life where they had a very high caries rate. They also have areas of exposed dentine, both in the incisor and molar region, and an obvious cavity is present on the buccal surface of the forefall. We can see those features highlighted here. Note that there is an improvement in the shade, in this case from a 1M1.5 to a 0.5M1, so a very pleasing change. But notice how the previous white spot lesions have been uncovered. If you're considering a situation where you may not be seeing the patient for some time and you're unsure about their compliance with using GC Tooth Mousse Plus, then you do have another option. And that other option doesn't rely on the patient's compliance. And instead, it uses GCMI varnish, which releases CPP ACP, and you simply paint that onto the lesions. You can paint further applications on at subsequent appointments. And this way, you don't need to be concerned as to whether the patient is going to use the Tooth Mousse Plus or not. A really important aspect in this case was that the patient experienced no pulpal reactions whatsoever. Despite having obvious dentine exposed on the buccal surfaces of 3, 1, 4, 1, and 4, 6, as well as the cavitation present on the buccal side of the 4, 4. So let's summarize with some key take-home points. First of all, as the last case beautifully illustrates, the PAP Plus in-office gel doesn't cause pulpal responses or soft tissue injury, despite being used without any gingival barrier. Secondly, in terms of case selection, as with any type of at-home or in-office bleaching treatment, a mid-range yellow is going to show the most marked improvement. When you're treating very light shades, be careful of reaching the saturation point. It's essential to assess cases before treatment for a history of past orthodontic treatment using fixed appliances and also carefully dry the teeth and examine the teeth for fluorosis 
and indeed for other causes of developmental enamel opacity. If the patient has had orthodontic treatment, then spend some time removing any residues of bracket adhesive because you'll get a much more even and consistent bleaching result if you do this. And finally, in terms of following up the case, be prepared to get onto the treatment of any opacities, be they from older white spot lesions or newer white spot lesions or fluorosis or developmental enamel opacities by applying GC tooth mousse. It will effectively reverse the appearance of all of those lesions and leave you with well mineralized enamel, which looks normal. I hope that these Discussion points can add to and improve the way that you manage cases when you're using the PAP Plus in-office product.